Oregon State at Arizona, uh, a game that I feel like people are not talking about when this has gigantic implications on the Pac-12. This is a tough barn to go into. So uh, Rice Eccles, Bryce Eccles, Arizona, at home, getting three in the hook. Oregon State playing incredible football. But so is Arizona right now. And the Fafita, the, what is he, like 5'7", five, 5'8"? Five, I mean, just slinging balls all around the yard. Slinging them. That kid is playing out of his mind right now, and he's got the weapons around him. And you know what? Gosh dang it, that defense for Arizona has greatly improved this year. It has greatly improved. And part of that is because they got guys in there now, larger guys in the interior, guys that they don't normally have that size, that caliber. This is a tough game to pick for. What are your thoughts? I uh, I've been really impressed with how Arizona's played the past few weeks. I think you know, they they had a bye week. I think both these teams had a bye, if I'm not mistaken. So there's not really an advantage there either way. But golly, man, Arizona just since the new quarterback has been thrust in there, they've been really impressive. They should have beat USC, no doubt about it. And then you know. Beating, yeah, being in a seven point football game against Washington is really, really impressive as well. The problem is, I, I just, I love Judd Fish, love, him. but I do think Oregon State, I think Jonathan Smith, they're going to be ready to play out of the bye. They understand what kind of position they're in in terms of legit Pac 12 championship aspirations and even college football playoff aspirations if they were to do so. Right. I think they believe that their, their roster is constructed enough to where they can do that. DJU after the bye week, you know, you get them settled in one more time. 15 to 4 touchdown interception ratio has been pretty good. He's taking care of the football right outside that one football game, which he lost. The the key here is gonna be be able to run the football. In Arizona, yes, they're much improved defensive line interiorly. I just trust that your running game and defense can travel on the road in the Pac 12 and you can get a win here. I'm gonna take Oregon State to win, and obviously I'll, I'll take the, the three and a half points. Yeah, and uh, I don't disagree with that. Would it shock you if I told you that Arizona is the 14th best run defense in the country in terms of total yards per game? Before this year, absolutely. I mean, but you've seen it in their games. You've absolutely seen it. Yeah. We've seen it. And uh, what is the major difference between Noah Fafita and, you know, our boy? Uh, Jane Delora. Jane Turnovers. Delora. Turnovers. It's a huge difference right there. Give me Arizona in their barn to win this game straight up. Uh, here's why. I, I just – Arizona is two plays away from being 6-1 and one right now. And and think about how differently we would be thinking about Arizona right now. Beating yeah. USC, beating Mississippi State, and barely yeah. lost to Washington. Yeah. I, I think – look, I know Oregon State's coming off the bye, but the reality is, like, they have – in their eyes, tougher games ahead of them. They have tougher games ahead of them. This is Arizona's chance to, like, the USC loss was heartbreaking, right? And they pounded Washington State. That was a statement, right? But this is a chance to, like, establish themselves as a top-half Pac-12 team. They go yeah. they go in this game, and they went... Like, there's a reason that this line is at three and a half. Like, I think Vegas understands that Arizona... Like, this is a top 30... 25 power rated team in the country easily. Yeah. Now, granted, Oregon State's pro- top 15, right? But yeah, give me Arizona at home. I think Noah Fafita has just been playing awesome. And I think he's absolutely breaking standards right now for guys his size. I mean, kind of, you know, that stigma of not being able to play like at that size. He's slinging the ball around the yard. And uh, I love it. I'm here for it. And they're still throwing the ball. They're still throwing the ball effectively. They run the ball. They're top half run, running, running the ball in the country. I mean, granted, Oregon State's defense has showed up at times, but uh, we saw them uh, play on the road, and they've done well in certain games on the road. But I think, I just think Arizona finds a way to get it done. I really do. Give me no, and, and I wouldn't dishes. be surprised. I love that. I think it's something you bring up. No, Vita. I think it's really interesting to 
think about the differences between these quarterbacks, right? You have DJU, who's massive, six foot five, 250 pounds, maybe 250 plus, right? Huge arm, hot, like high five star talent, right? From a, a dominating, I think it was from St. John Bosco in California. And then you also have Noah Vita, who's, oh, and by the way, DJU is a veteran guy, played a ton of football games. Noah Vita is retro freshman, right? From, from Servite in Anaheim, California, who was pretty under recruited as a three star. And he's like super short. So like, it's awesome to see the differences in these quarterbacks, but it goes to show you in college football, like winning comes in all different ways. And both these players and have had a ton of success. And, and these teams have had success in large part due to the quarterback play that they've had. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. I think you bring up a great point with that schedule dynamics there. I do think Oregon state and Jonathan Smith are veteran led and like, I think they they understand the importance of this game. I think they understand that Arizona is much better than that four and three record that they that they have, right? And just because Oregon State's ranked in the top eleven doesn't mean they're going to go in there and win. I think they understand that. But if you get past Arizona, you've had Colorado, sure, right? Might be tough, might not be. Stanford should be a win, and then you get into your grind there. I think they understand that this is like this is step one into making making the Pac twelve championship game. For Arizona, yeah, I, I, I do think like you do have to learn how to win football games, and I doesn't mean that they can't do it, but I I do think like they've been in in close games all year, and more often than not, other than Stanford, like they've lost those games, and I think Oregon State's you know better enough to be able to to win this football game, especially because I think they both think it's gonna be close, Vegas does too, but I think Oregon State will get a, get it come out on top. Yeah, I mean, if look if you take away. The Utah game, right, they got at home when Utah's offense was totally dysfunctional. I'm going to take that out of the, the data set. If you if you leave the rest of the teams in there and take out Utah, they've been giving up 30 points a game in the Pac-12 defensively, Oregon State has. So if you're going to give me a shootout, I don't think Jed Fish is going to make the mistake of not being aggressive late in the game like he was in the, against Utah when they didn't go for two there. I think he's... I think they're locked in, dude. Also, too, like this is a very easy part of your schedule for Oregon State to sleepwalk to, because like like you said, Stanford, Colorado, the Colorado Stanford, you could easily sleepwalk through this part of the schedule in your brain, because there's coaches that are already looking at Washington. They have coaches on their staff that are already looking at Washington right now and how to defend that. And I'm just saying, like you don't have all your resources ready for this game. I mean, you're they might be in for a surprise. So I I will be fading you. With your, yeah, I'll be taking Arizona. How do you think the the wide receivers of Arizona are gonna? You think they're gonna feast against Arizona State or Oregon State? I'm talking about McMillan and Cowling. I do. I don't know what what. I or, do you not think so? No, I I, I think it will absolutely. I think the over is an interesting play here for sure. I, but the problem yeah, is with it, with if Oregon State's gonna win this football game, which I believe they will, I. I think they're going to hopefully try to control the game, run the football, slow on the clock, get their defense rest, make Fafita like have pressure in his mind that like, hey, we got to win this football game. We got to win. We got to get a touchdown on every possession, and that's when he makes a mistake. Even though he's been very, very impressive all year long, um, I think that that's what I would lean toward would be the over at fifty six and a half. Is I guess it's a higher number, but. Yeah, and, like, I, I think a lot of people are going to say, like, oh, well, Matthew, that, that rushing stat that you gave about Arizona, that's that totally skewed, right, because they played a team like Mississippi State. Mississippi State ran the ball 30 times that game. So, like, Arizona has stepped up in the run game this year. And if this game, if you're asking me, can DJU do it on the road? Maybe he can. I don't know. But – if you're going to put it on DJ, you in the fourth quarter on the road, Granny's been playing really well. I'm going to take Arizona. Yeah. Yo, who do you think is a better quarterback matchup here? Who's my quarterback? Fafita or DJU for, for this one game? It's hard to say. I mean, because like you're looking at DJU and you, you can't have, you can't not have bias, right? From what you've seen in his lows, right? And, and in Noah Fafita's case, like we haven't seen the lows, right? we haven't seen what that looks like. And they could come in this game, but also like DJU, like it's been pretty productive in what they've asked him to do. 
Fafita, though, I, I think he has more more on his shoulders, which is crazy as a, as a young, small freshman guy. I like it's really interesting. Really, really they're interesting. still I'm, averaging. I'm, they're, they're still averaging five yards a carry in the run game, so it's not like they can't run the ball. You know. Yeah. For no, for sure, for sure. But also, like, if you have those wide receivers, Cowling and McMillan, you're gonna take advantage of them. Jetfish knows that. It's a night game. This is a nine thirty game. If you're on Central Time Zone, obviously it's seven thirty local time. We love that. We love late night Pac twelve football games. Gives you something to do. You know, there's, not, there's not many. There's not many left. Yeah, cherish them.